Is cremation a sin? What does the Bible say about cremation? Most importantly, should you be cremated or buried? Those are the questions we will answer today. So stay tuned and be inspired. Hello friends, this is Joshua Infantado, the founder of Becoming Christians Academy, the best online course for you if you want to learn God's way of life. A lot of people have been asking, is cremation a sin? Are people who cremate their loved ones or the dead committing sin? These are valid questions that we need to answer. Now, this video presentation is a summary of a study paper entitled, What Does the Bible Teach About Cremation? I have included the link below for you to get a free copy. So let's go back to our main question. Is cremation a sin? The answer is no. Cremation is not a sin according to the Bible and that's what we are going to discuss today. To better understand this topic, we must first define what cremation is. Cremation is a process of disposing of a dead body through heat, fire, and evaporation. Usually, the process includes using a cremation chamber or retort, which is a specially designed furnace for burning dead bodies. The dead body is put inside a sturdy cardboard container or casket. The cremation chamber can produce heat of up to 871 to 982 degrees Celsius. This heat is enough to burn up corpses and ensure that, that what remains would only be a few fragments. On average, it takes about 1-2 to two hours for an adult body to be fully disintegrated. Moreover, after a body is burned, there would still be around 2-3 to three kilograms of ashes or cremains. If there are still bones or huge chunks of remains, it would be grounded to powder. Here are the three things the Bible says about cremation. Number one, cremation is not mentioned in the Bible. The first thing we need to establish is that the word cremation does not appear in the Bible. It's a modern word that didn't exist at the time when the Bible was written. However, the concept of cremation can be found in the Bible. There are similar instances where the dead bodies are burned in the scripture. Number two, burning the body is not the usual practice for burial. Throughout the scripture, we see that the usual practice of God's people is to bury their dead. Yahshua, or popularly known as Jesus Christ, said in Luke 9 verse 60, Let the dead bury their dead. So, burning corpses is something unusual. That was the case in the body of King Saul. Let's read 1 Samuel 31 verse 11 to 13. Now, when the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and traveled all night and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Beth Shon. And they came to Jabesh and burned them there. Then they took their bones and buried them under the Tamaris tree at Jabesh and fasted seven days. In the case of King Saul, we read that he was decapitated. Aside from that, it could be that he was also mutilated. And by the time he was found by the valiant men of Israel, his body could already be rotting or decayed. Thus, Instead of trying to put together the body of King Saul, they chose to burn the body and not go through the usual way of putting to rest the kings of Israel. Number three, burning bodies is part of capital punishment. In some instances, burning bodies isn't actually a burial rite, but rather a capital punishment. This was the case in Leviticus 20 verse 14, where we read, If a man marries a woman and her mother, it is wickedness. They shall be burned with fire, both he and they, that there may be no wickedness among you. In Joshua 7 verse 25, we read, And Joshua said, Why have you troubled us? Yahweh will trouble you this day. So Israel stoned him with stones, and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. You might have heard about Achan, the man who had treasures in his tent after God forbade the Israelites not to do so. As a result, Joshua and his men were defeated by the soldiers of Ai. Eventually, Joshua knew Achan caused the defeat of Israel by taking the accursed things. Yahweh himself commanded that the culprit, along with all that he has, would be burned. We read that in Joshua 7 verse 15. Then it shall be that he 
who is taken with the cursed things shall be burned with fire. He and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of Yahweh and because he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. We also read Jeremiah 49 verse 2. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will cause an alarm of war to be heard in Rabbah of the Ammonites, and it shall be a desolate heap, and her daughters shall be burned with fire. Then shall Israel be heir unto them that were his heirs, saith Yahweh. In some translations, the daughters in this verse are translated as villages. Whether this refers to actual people or the village, we can see that burning bodies is part of God's punishment. These are the three things the Bible says about cremation. As you can see, burning bodies as a way to dispose of human remains was not the usual practice if we read the Bible. When you read the accounts of dead people being burned, it is even painted in a negative way. So, this leads us to the original question. Is cremation a sin? In spite of how burning dead bodies is portrayed in a body, cremation is still not a sin. Though we read that burning dead bodies or corpses aren't spoken of favorably in the scripture, there is no actual verse that directly commands not to do it or it is a sin to cremate dead people. The Apostle Paul even wrote in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Of course, Christian tradition would favor more burying the dead rather than burning them. Because cremation isn't a sin and is nowhere condemned in the Bible, it comes down to an individual decision whether it is best to cremate or bury a dead body. Some people may be concerned about a cremated body and how it will be resurrected in the future. Well, this should not be a source of concern for Christians. You know why? Because God can resurrect a cremated body. God is the Almighty who is not limited to just resurrecting buried bodies. He can do whatever He pleases and certainly He can resurrect bodies that have been burned. We must also remember how some saints were burned at the stake. Some were fed to the lions, while others were sewn in two. Some were decapitated and impaled. Some were not even given a proper burial. Would you say that these saints have lost their chance of being part of God's kingdom simply because of the manner of their death? Does this mean that God will not resurrect them simply because they were not buried properly? Of course, the answer is no. Moreover, even if you bury a dead body, the body would still decay, decompose, and eventually leaving bones and other hard materials. This is the same thing that happens to some extent with cremation. Cremation simply hastens the process of decomposition. We must also remember that when God will resurrect us, if we are going to be part of His kingdom, we will be resurrected as spirit beings. We will not need a physical body anymore. We will not be subject to illness, hunger, thirst, and even death. What we must also remember is this. Did I live a life worth living for? Did I serve God and fulfill His purpose for me? The main concern that we should have is whether we have lived a life that is pleasing to our Father or not. King Solomon, as he approached the final years of his life, made this conclusion. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. In the final analysis, what the Bible says about cremation isn't the main concern of every Christian. Our main concern is to do the work of God, follow His commandments, and fulfill His will and purpose in our lives. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something new today. Please don't forget to grab your free study paper about cremation, which I have shared through the link I provided in the description box below. That's it for me. I'm Joshua Fantado of Becoming Christians Academy, praying that Yahweh, the Most High God, our Father, will guide us to His truth. See you next time.